All right, I uh, have a few folks. Nice to see you. Um, two folks there. We also got Felicia. So let me share my screen here. All right, so feedback, teacher to student, one of the more important aspects of teaching, letting kids know how they're doing here. And here's a, uh, a little slide. There's a couple models for feedback. I selected the FAST model here for student feedback. Um, of course, we know the situation a lot of schools are facing right now, um, but FAST means F for frequency, so try to customize how frequently you give feedback, and that's going to depend on uh, the time you have and the assignment. Uh, a is for accurate. Try to get your words right, facts straight. I'll show you a resource for that in a moment. Specific. Um, feedback should be about... Uh, concrete goals and be clear as, as, as possible. And T for timely, try to give regularly. So try to set that up at the start of the year. And again, uh, we're here in schools are experiencing a lot of challenges right now. So uh, just, just a um, fast model might give you some uh, a rubric to approach this from. On the bottom of this slide here, if you're looking for language, the AR and D team has put together. I'm going to click on the English example here. If you're looking for words, um, which uh, I was in classroom last week, and I was like, "Wow, how how should I explain that?" This is an exhaustive document uh, for descriptive feedback starters here. So uh, areas of strength, if you're looking to compliment a, a student, look at this, this is quality work because, or your thinking shows, your writing tells me. I mean, uh, if you're looking for words, this is a good starting point. Areas of improvement, one thing to improve on, your writing tells me again, and strategies. Uh, if you look at, um, I, again, I say this is exhaustive because on the left side, this is by grade level. So depending on the grade you teach, there's K through five, ECE through five. And also uh, at the bottom, uh, I'm actually in the wrong, I'm at, now I'm on the table of contents. So you can go by um, the area you teach if you're a specialist teacher uh, or a subject matter. So um, this is, let me just like look on elementary math here. And again, it's by grade level on the left side and critical, uh, the criterion and example feedback. So uh, I'm just going to highlight one here for math. You can count to 20. What number comes after 20? Let's try counting to 30. So really good prompts there if you're uh, looking for feedback scripts. All right. So that's... Uh, might find that helpful. Uh, the connection to the, the book that we're reading um, from Zaretta Hammond is that, uh, you know, feedback, it tells students, hey, we've heard them. And, uh, you know, when we talk to them and give them concrete feedback, they'll, we're developing that trust. And as uh, Zaretta Hammond says, one of the challenges the ally teacher has is to confront in the learning partnership is how to give feedback so that it doesn't shut down that student emotionally or create anxiety. So that's an important point. We want, uh, again, to this, any feedback to develop that trusting relationship with our students. All right, so what's going to happen in this breakout session? You have two options. I'm going to demonstrate for you 
on the left side of the screen here how to give feedback. Uh, I'm going to do an actual demo with Pear Deck using takeaways and also one of their best, I think, tools is Reflect and Review. So I'm going to show you that. Then I'm going to show you in feedback how to give uh, uh uh, in Seesaw, I'm sorry, in Seesaw, I'm going to show you how to give feedback and then uh, show you in a Google form how to give automatic feedback and um, actually in um, Google Keep. Um, I'll show you how to, if you, we have some Google Keep users in the district, if you want to use Google Keep for feedback. So that's the active portion. If you want to work independently, this is set up just like the last two teal days here on the right side. Uh, if you want to explore on your own, you can work independently. Uh, we would like you to um, watch a short clip on the importance of feedback uh, and then read the article here on Edutopia and getting students to engage with feedback. Uh, use the resources on this slide that's linked here and develop a lesson that includes an example of descriptive feedback. So, it, um, and then finally, you just put together a document of common student feedback samples. And you, so those are the independent items if you want to just um, work on your own and, and not participate in the uh, items I'm going to show you in just a moment. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start here. And I'm going to start by, uh, with, uh, if you do work independently, come back at 1105, please. Okay. And then we'll, we'll share out just with any ideas or strategy you think you might be using in the classroom regarding feedback to students, time savers or things that are working for you now or might work for you after you explore the topics in this session. But come back at 11.05 into this current meet session. And then at 11.10, everybody from the other two breakout rooms will come back into our, our room as well, our meeting room as well. All right. Um, any questions? Let me just pull up the chat here. I don't think don't see anything in the chat. All right. So I'm going to demo. Um, Pear Deck uh, takeaways and giveaways and also reflect and review. So just uh, let me make this a little bigger here. And I uh, got some Pear Deck usage stats just for frame of reference here for the first two months. And uh, if you're not a Pear Deck user yet and you want to explore, um, you, you can you can see we got a lot of uh, power users now in the district. You can see just for the first two months here, there's been close to 27,000 distinct presentations. So. Uh, that's quite a bit of Pear Deck presentations. What I like is the moments of engagement. Now, what's a moment of engagement? Well, that's defined where a student actually interacts with the Pear Deck slide. They're either typing a text response, they're dragging a response, but they're actually interacting uh, on that slide. So close to 2 million moments of engagement in the first two months of the year, which is, uh, I think, really solid. So kids are... are, are we see classrooms that are very uh, active using Pear Deck. And um, you can see moments of engagement of all time is 14 million. I'm not sure uh, what the time frame is on all time. It might be a year and a half, maybe two years. I'm not sure. Could be maybe three years. But anyway, so far this year, 2 million mo moments of engagement. And um, a lot of teachers finding success with Pear Deck or, or, or finding it a very valuable tool to engage kids. So, in showing Pear Deck, here's what I, in giving feedback, I'm going to show you uh, three ways um, using the Pear Deck teacher dashboard. 
That's how to give quick, immediate feedback. Then I'm going to show you uh, how to use reflect and review, which is asynchronous. So uh, I hear from a lot of teachers, again, time, I don't have much time, or I can't reflect in the moment. Reflect and review will give you the teacher the ability to write feedback after the lesson. And um, any comments that I make during the lesson are also saved in reflect and review. And uh, this is the quickest way to really enter feedback into Pear Deck other than the live mode. But um, so that's reflect and review. And then uh, if there's time, I'll also just show you Pear Deck takeaways. We showed that last time, but that's also a feature of the premium version. And that creates a Google Doc for the student. And they can go in and then you can get feedback in that Google Doc. The one difference between what's a takeaway and reflect and review um, in Pear Deck takeaways, any comments you make on student work are not saved in there from the Pear Deck session. So you actually physically have to go into the Google Doc takeaway and make the comment. And I'll, I'll try and make that clear. All right, so um, let me demonstrate this here. And I'm going to put in, let's, let's pretend you're students. And um, I'm going to get out of that session here. And now I'm going to start a Pear Deck session. Last time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with the thing. Let's say we're learning about the water cycle. And I'm going to have you all join my instructor paste activity here. Let me get it going. Um, and I'm going to put the link into the chat. Okay. All right, so here's the link. If you could join that Pear Deck. I got one student connected to the class. And let me let me show you, in case you're new to Pear Deck again, just a review of what I see as a teacher here. So Got four students in here. Yay. All right. Four students. Let me show you. Let me see what's coming up on the screen here. So here's what I see as a teacher. And I know a few of the teachers I'm working with are using Pear Deck because it really gives them a chance to control part of that student's screen. Because I know we still have some students who are multitasking. But again, with Pear Deck, you could at least control one of the tabs. Um, so here's what I see right now. This is my teacher dashboard. And I see that four students are in class. And um, here's my teacher dashboard. I don't want to show the teacher dashboard to the students, but I can see right now um, that I have four in here. Oops, you're not... Um, not seeing that. Let me just make sure you can see that. All right, here's the teacher dashboard. Come on, internet. And there's the teacher dashboard. So I can see four in the roster. And as responses start coming in, um, I will be able to see who's responding to what. And uh, that's a nice feature. So, and I can pull this up on an iPad. Uh, some teachers pull it up on their phone so they can roam around the room or another Chromebook or uh, a mobile device. But you can put this teacher dashboard uh, on a mobile device and roam around the room while kids are interacting with your slides. So now that we're in class, let's. Uh, Go ahead and uh, uh, 
uh, go ahead and respond to um, the first slide there. And just tell me, um, let's actually go to the right side and tell me what you learned from the water lesson. Type in the text box there. You can also draw, but I want you to type in the text what you learned from our water lesson. Okay. Oh, and I like what like what Miss Amy, I like that effort Amy's putting into that answer. And again, you can see on my teacher dashboard, which is showing to you right now, I can I can directly give verbal feedback to the kids. All right, Felicia, I like how you're thinking about what you learned about the water cycle. Thank you. We'll give 30 more seconds to this. Um, okay. All right, I like how everybody is focused on what they're they're actively thinking about our water cycle. So again, this teacher dashboard that I see here is only available to me. I, I don't want to project this to the room because it has student names on it and student work. But what I can do for feedback is I can, um, let's say if I wanted to highlight one here, I can click the circle. Let me blow this up a little so you can see it. The little quote, and I can quick leave feedback. And uh, I'm going to say, um, let's say, let's meet after school to um, chat more about how to get you caught up. Okay, so then I would send feedback in the moment right there through the Pear Deck teacher dashboard. And there's my feedback. That student will get a little note on their device that there's feedback for them and they can read that feedback. So that's one way of giving direct feedback on a current live Pear Deck session. Uh, also, if I wanted to star an answer, I could start and then when I uh, open my projector tab, only the starred ones would show to my students. Uh, if a kid is being disrespectful or has an appropriate response, I can also click hide response. But most of the teachers, uh, let's say here again for, let's say, Miss um, Felicia here, I could say, oh, great uh, visual. Thanks. And that's a direct, again, live feedback. Okay, so that's live feedback during a live teacher-led Pear Deck session. So if, asking if students can respond. Um, students can, um, uh, students, uh, I don't think they can respond to that uh, feedback. I, actually, I think they, let me see if I could pull up the teacher. Um, that's a good question. I will have to look that up. Um, all right, if I had more slides here, and actually I do have one more slide. Um, I, again, I can advance all the slides from my teacher dashboard. I can also turn this into, if I wanted to, from the teacher dashboard, you could see my options here. If I had a, a numerous slides, I could turn this into student paste. And I could say, all right, now that we've done this together, I want you to work independently at your own pace and I can turn this into a student pace pair deck and each student can work at their own pace on the rest of the slides. And I can also via the teacher dashboard see where the students are at uh, while they're progressing through the slides and I can continue to leave feedback on that session. 
I'm going to end this session so I can actually show you reflect and review and how that works. So we've given some live feedback. I'm going to end this session here from my teacher dashboard. I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it uh, TL Day 3 KWL Sample. And now on my teacher dashboard, there's two options here. I want to do first, uh, this is how to share this with your students. So for one, I am going to generate takeaways just so I can show you that. And as you can see here, what takeaways are, is going to create a Google Doc for each student, share it with them, and it'll have all of the content, all of the slides in there and their answers. It will not have the feedback I gave them though. So that feedback will be in, in reflect and review. But I'm gonna publish takeaways just so I can show you that and the difference. And now it's publishing takeaways. I could share that link with my students. It'll also will show up in the student's Google Drive. I'm the owner of that. We'll, I'll show you that in a moment. So takeaways are now published. So each kid has a copy of their responses to all the slides. But I wanna show you reflect and review. Because this, I think, is the, if you wanted to do um, the quickest way to review a whole Pear Deck lesson, this would be suitable for you. So I'm going to click Open, Reflect, and Review. And now it brings up this interface. And when I say this interface, you can't see that yet. So let me... Um, find my Google Meet. And there we go. I'm going to stop presenting and I'll show you the interface for reflect and review. So when I said reflect and review, here's the teacher interface. And I don't need to do this right away. I can do this on my own time. So during my planning period, I can say, look, I, I had a culminating project on the water cycle and I want to, you know, uh, half the students grade is going to be on their reflections here. Uh, so I want to grade it. So here is my interface for reflect and review. And I will come down here and I have all of the students, it doesn't really show on the meet there, but I have the four students that were in my slide, in my Pear Deck. I can now select them. So I'm going to select one student here. And here is that student's responses. And um, I can come in here and leave feedback now. When I click on the leave feedback button right up here, it already has the feedback I gave them. Any feedback I've already given them is recorded in Reflect and Review. So during the live session here, I left this feedback comment for the student and it's already there. Uh, so if I'm grading their whole responses here, and let's say uh, they forgot to do this last slide, I could come into the leave feedback and can give them some written feedback here. That's a great summary of your learning on slide one, but you need to complete slide two. Um, okay, so then I could send that feedback. I could add more if I needed to, and then the student would see that feedback. So this is reflect and review. The nice thing about this is I do not, I can just stay in this interface right here that you see on my screen. So now in the top right corner, I have my other students. So I could click on another student and 
their responses come up. And again, I can leave feedback for this student. Please complete all the slides next time. And I can send feedback. So a quick way, again, with one interface to get to all my students who are in the Pear Deck, leaving them feedback. Now, here's the one thing you need to do with reflect and review. They're like, well, how, am I, how is a student going to be able to see this? In the top left corner, there's a thing that says copy student link. You need to give all the students this one link. So I'm going to copy that student link and... I am going to paste it into our chat and you click on that link and you will see the feedback I gave you in Reflect and Review. You, the student will only see their feedback, which of course is very important. Uh, let me give some feedback here to this other student. And there we go. So now I've sent feedback to all my students. Okay. And so again, uh, the students will need let me just reiterate that, that this, the student link, they will need that link. You'll need to give it to them. However, you distribute information, the class website, uh, Seesaw, Google Classroom, however you communicate information to them, give them that link and then they'll go in and they will be able to uh, see the feedback you left them on that Pear Deck. Okay, so that's Reflect and Review. Again, the biggest uh, advantage there is teacher, you only need one interface and you can go in and see all the student responses from the Pear Deck session. All right, so if there are no questions on that, I am going to leave Reflect and Review. One thing I just wanted to add, yep. Brian, um, is I receive a doc, you know, if I wanted to like, add, you know, give feedback back, I received the doc in my email with the slides and I can summarize in there. And then the teacher is also the co the owner of that. So you can go, you can give some back and forth inside of that doc. Right. Then the reflect and review doc. Correct. Right. Okay. Now, you can, the other way to give feedback is if you don't want to use Reflect and Review. And these are just two options that Pear Deck has for teachers. They created Reflect and Review. Um, so um, I think teachers could just have one interface and quickly review all of the responses from a Pear Deck session. So if you have 30 kids, you can quickly go to each kid and give them feedback and, or grade the lesson that way. You can do takeaways, but let me stop presenting here and show you where the takeaways live as a teacher. But you're going to have to go into each student takeaway to give feedback. So let me show you what my screen looks like on that. And okay, so if I just wanted to give feedback on takeaways, Let's say uh, I, I just wanted to, the kids who weren't responding. So here's my Google Drive. And uh, let me see if I can blow it up just a little bit here. 
And you see right here, I'm the owner of all of the takeaways. So I could go into that student's takeaway and let's say, unless you here, here's the takeaway. It's a Google document. I am the owner as a teacher and it's shared with the student. And I see their summary. So again, the one thing with takeaways is there's any feedback I left during the live session is not on here. So if I gave them good feedback, it's just not captured on here. It's only in reflect and review. I think that's a key distinction. So if you're an actively, re but a lot of teachers don't have time to respond during the live session. So um, this Google Doc, you can you can respond in here. You can use the you know the comment feature um, in Google Docs. You know, please uh, resubmit and. Uh, I, you know, I would like uh, whatever feedback you want to give them. I would like you to be more attentive during, uh, while I'm presenting. Okay, I kind of need a, I need a tech teacher. I need to, to show me how to type again. There we go. So again, all the Google Doc features, uh, commenting features you have. Um, and then the student would have that feedback right on this, this document here. So I would say you can use a combination of the two, but as a teacher from a workflow perspective, you're, you might have to go, if you want to get feedback to every kid, you're going to have to go into each of the Google docs, which, um, can be cumbersome. So the advantage with reflect and review is it's all in one interface and you can just do it from there. Whereas here, uh, they're all, they're all saved here, but each one is a separate document. And of course, each one has to be a separate document because it's only shared with that student. All right. So I'm going to close that out and um, I'll close a few windows here and let's see, I'll stop presenting. Let's see. All right. So that is Pear Deck. Um, and again, if you're, uh, I'm seeing it in the, you, I, I was in a classroom last year, was used with second graders, working with a few teachers now who towards the, depending how long your classes are, um, I have a couple teachers who towards like the 30 minute mark, the kids start to get a little um, drift a bit and he's using Pear Deck then to bring them back in and let them get that student voice in. So that could be a potential uh, strategy use for it. But if you haven't used it, try it out there. Close this session here. Okay. And we have all the Pear Deck uh, all-in-ones here in, in our master slide deck for today. I'm going to move over to Seesaw and how to give feedback in there just to review. I know Seesaw is used in a lot of DPS classrooms. So let me stop presenting here and I will get my Seesaw demo class up here. Right. Okay. And so a review of Seesaw, how to give feedback. Seesaw makes it very easy from a teacher workflow okay. perspective to give feedback. And let me give the right one here. Okay, so let's say this is my sample seesaw lesson. And I can see I have uh, one response waiting for this activity here. So I'm going to click review here mm -hmm. and go into that student response. The Seesaw interface, I have the comment feature right here on the bottom left. So you can see that on my screen and I can quickly comment. 
by writing. Okay. Also give it a rating. Uh, numerous teachers use the, I can use the audio feedback here. So I can click the microphone. Um, I don't know if my microphone, I'm going to go ahead and post my comment. You can see my comment is there. You know, I'm not sure. There we go. Voice comment. So click the button. Hi there, student. Awesome effort. I loved how you included the graphic on this. Keep up the good work. You are off to a great start. And click the green check mark. Bam. There we go. The student now has written feedback and an audio feedback from me. Hi there, student. Awesome effort. I loved how you included the graphic on this. Keep up the good work. You are off to a great start. Okay, so that's a quick way to get feedback using the built-in comment tools. If you want to go a little more, uh, depending on uh, the student and the assignment, come down to your three dots in the bottom right, and you can use a couple other tools to give feedback. So I'm going to click the three dots. I'm going to go to Edit Post. I'm going to edit that student's post here, and uh, I can use some of the uh, Canvas tools here. Uh, let's say if I just want to uh, highlight some writing, I can grab the highlighter tool and highlight that. And if I wanted to comment on it, great opening sentence. This obviously involves a little bit more work, but it's up to you, the teacher. Great opening sentence. So I can use those tools on the Canvas there. Uh, I can also, uh, again, just use, whoops, eraser tool. Um, I got a little, oops. If I wanted to upload an image or an emoji, I can use the upload tool. Grab the camera here. And let's say, again, if I really wanted to personalize it and I wanted to give them a thumbs up, and they wanted to see my face, hey, thumbs up. There we go. And I'll attach that. So if I were to click the check mark and the, the green check mark, when the student went in and saw that, they would say, hey, there's Mr. Dino giving me a thumbs up. So it really personalizes it. But again, this all depends on your, your time and how much you want to give. This might just be for certain students. Um, one other thing I'll just show you if you wanted to give feedback. Students are used to emojis and graphics, so I'm going to go back in to edit that post. And I would click my camera. And if I wanted to upload something, click the camera and then select upload. I can also do a video, by the way. So if I wanted to give them a video message, I could record a short video. Uh, but if I wanted to upload something, I would upload from my computer, and let's say I wanted to give them a badge. Um, I'll give them a Pear Deck badge because that's all I have available. And there we go. They got a nice Pear Deck badge for a written assignment. And then click the green check mark. And um, I got to click approve on this whole to approve that so it shows up in the student journal. There we go. So now I've given feedback to that one student. And uh, when they went, when they go in, I'll show you what it looks like on the student side here. So I believe this is the student side. Yep. So I'm logged in as a demo student and they will see that response there. Uh, all of my feedback. So they would come in here. They would see, oh, wow, there's the thumbs up for my instructor. I did a good job. There's a Pear Deck badge, which means confusion to me as an elementary student. Um, great opening sentence. Oh, and... Boy, lots of feedback on here. Oh, and there's even an audio. 
Hi there, students. Awesome effort. I loved how you included the graphic on this. Keep up the good work. You are off to a great start. Okay, so that's the student view of feedback. Uh, seesaw, nice, very easy to give feedback using those various methods I showed you there. All right, <coughs> excuse me, so that's Seesaw. <coughs> <clears throat> Let's cover uh, a couple other easy, easy ways to enable a teacher to give feedback to students. Some students use Google Forms. With Google Forms, you can automatically set up responses to quizzes here. So let me pull that up. And my pants here. All right. So that one. Okay. Hmm. All right. So in Google Forms, if you wanted to give automatic feedback, you could set that up if you wanted to. Uh, set up a quiz or use a pre-made quiz. So here's just a sample question. Uh, let's say you wanted to uh, un check for understanding on compound sentence types. You just taught a lesson on compound sentences and you want to make sure kids are with you. And if not, uh, figure out how to reteach or maybe do some office hours. So here's the question that I set up in a Google form. And uh, um, here's the correct answer. Uh, it's actually, I typed in a compound sentence here. But when the students takes, takes this quiz, I want to give them automatic feedback. So I need to go to the answer key for this question, which is in the down, right here on the left side, down left side. And here's the answer key, uh, the correct answer to this. Identify the type of sentence. She tried to choose her words carefully, but maybe she wasn't careful enough. And how many points? I'll give it one point. The answer, it's a compound sentence, but I want the students to understand or learn more if they did not get it correctly. So I'm going to click the add answer feedback section. And... Um, this is a compound sentence, and I can elaborate more on this if it uh, were an actual question. Uh, I mean, an actual uh, question for a student. This is a compound sentence, dot, dot, dot. Uh, I do like this feature here, too. If you want to encourage independent learning, you can attach a link to maybe a slide deck you went over in class or any other resource that will help them, a link. You could also just, uh, this is... This is Google at work. You can go right into Google's YouTube interface and send them to more Google educational resources. So let's remember it's for educational. Compound sentence. Let me find a quick resource if I type in compound sentence. Uh, in this video, you learn about compound sentences. Looks pretty appropriate. Of course, I don't want to check it as a teacher before I send it out to kids. Um, let me just edit that. This is a compound sentence. Da, 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 da. Please review the short video to understand this topic. Okay, so they know what to do, and then I save it. And here's what it looks like from the student perspective. Uh, before I test it out, just a couple other things. So when they do this quiz, uh, they'll put in the answer, they'll get that. But before I uh, test it out, go into settings, and you have uh, numerous settings here. Um, you can 
if you have more than one uh, question, you can uh, release grades immediately or after after manual review. Here's why some teachers are using Google Forms is because we do have locked mode feature. And so in locked mode, this is the one without using a software like Land School Air, if you want to lock kids' screens, you can turn on locked mode. And as long as they're using a DPS managed Chromebook, which I think 99% of our students are, it'll lock their screen. Uh, and it will, they won't be able to go to any other tabs. So it, it's, uh, it's very nice. So if you really want to just test their understanding and make sure they're not Googling the answer or going to another tab, um, turn on locked mode and it will, uh, it will work. So that might be an option if you want to really just check their understanding without uh, outside, outside aids. So turn on locked mode. They'll get a message when they take the quiz that everything's about ready to be locked down, et cetera. So they'll get warning. But um, that is one of the nice features of using a Google form in locked mode. I'll turn that off for now so we can test this. If you turn that on, you won't be able to test it except on a student Chromebook, by the way. So in fact, let me just show you that. So watch, I'm going to go to preview. You'll get this message. Say, hey, locked mode is on. It says you can't access this quiz because locked mode is on and only respondents using managed Chromebooks can open the quiz. So uh, most of, I'm not on a managed Chromebook and neither are you probably, but um, your kids will uh, get the quiz and it'll say, I'm about ready to lock your screen. You can't access anything else. So um, you might want to share that with um, your peers if they're having challenges, which I know a lot of the uh, teachers are with tab switching and multitasking. I'm going to turn off lock mode right now so we can see it. You can, there's other settings you could turn here. Uh, I do want missed respondents to see which questions were answered incorrectly. Um, you could change point values. All right, so here's how it looks from the student perspective right here. Uh, and in fact, let me just let you try. Uh, I'm going to put this in the... I'll put a link in the chat. And in the chat, go ahead and pretend we've had a lesson on compound sentences here. Okay, so try that out. Put the right link in the chat. I think I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you can see um, how it works here. You can also see responses. And it gives them, if they answered incorrectly, that'll bring them up those resources that you put in there. Okay. So those are automatic responses in Google Forms. Again, it's not too, it's not personal like the first two options we showed you where you're actually giving, you know, audio feedback or written feedback. But, you know, if you just need to uh, make sure they understand content and you want to do it on a Google form, that could be a solution for you. All right. I'm going to stop presenting that. And... Uh, I'll just show, let's see, we're coming back at 11.05. Okay. Um, just show you one. I, I just, I know I have uh, one teacher who's a Google Keep fan. I'm per, in my personal life, I use a lot of Google Keep. But again, by now, you know, what we say to teachers, just, just pick one tool, master it. Um, and, you know, we have all these tools out there, but just pick one become a master at it. So I'm just going to show you Google Keep and if it works for you down the road uh, or even for your kids. I find this is really helpful for upper elementary students. Google Keep. 
and it's built in. The nice thing is they can get it right from the Google waffle. Kids can keep lists. They can keep notes. If you're teaching certain note type, note taking strategies or reminders, they have it right at their disposal in their Google account. Here's how you can use it in giving feedback. So I'm going to share my screen here and Okay. So let's say I'm grading a Google document and I'm a I want to give feedback that is from a, what's called canned feedback or from a set of uh, standardized feedback. Maybe it's from the feedback I shared with you earlier from the AR and D team. There we go. So let's say this is a student report. And I want to give feedback, but I don't want to, I have 30 of these to grade and I don't, um, I want to be consistent in, in my feedback. So in Google Keep, in this Google Doc interface right here, I could, of course, as we showed earlier, add a comment, you know, right here um, through that interface. But on Google Docs, they give you quick access to tasks, keep, and calendar. So if I click on keep, it'll expand keep on the right side here. And I already have my canned comments over here in Google Keep. And I can do a couple things. I could copy and paste them in, or I like this feature here where I can just grab the note. And if you watch this visual, grab the grab the note and just drag it over to my document and it brings anything in there over to the Google document. Okay. So student, you got it. You post, and then I can delete the, um, the other items. So, uh, if you're a big Google keep fan, uh, that's, that could be a nice way to quickly just bring items over from Google Keep. Uh, or if you have a rubric over here, you can refer to it as you're grading the student work in the Google Doc. So um, that's just a, another handy feature if you just want to stay using the Google tools. And again, you can uh, just drag straight over from... Drag it straight over from the keep interface and then edit accordingly. Okay. Where did it go? I uh, just, it puts it either at the top or the, wherever your insertion point is in the Google Doc. So if you wanted to grade it at the bottom, you could drag it in. Oops. And there we go right there. And okay. then so it just you, looks like another paragraph. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. So it puts it into the document. So the difference is it's in the document right there. So let's say if you're like, all my comments are going to be, you tell all my. Um, so those would be your comments. Whereas if you were to just use the commenting feature in Google Docs. It just puts it on the right side. Again, not uh, not heavily used, but just if you are a Keep user um, and have a lot of items in Google Keep, then that, that could be an option for you. All right. So those are four ways of using um, 